Hey guys, Sean back here from SB Soto, and I'm gonna tell you guys a little story, especially for you young kids out there getting into machining. When I was younger, I had to walk to work in the snow barefoot, but that wasn't the worst of it. The worst of it was I had to cut my parts apart with a bandsaw. But in this modern time, I can wake up, put my slippers on, walk 10 feet, and fire this bad boy up. It's called a CNC, Crazy Ninja Cutter. Hiya! All right, guys, on today's Practical Machinist episode of How We Do It, I kind of want to go over tabbing. Not to be confused with, you know, going to the pub later on and then racking up your buddy's tab. That can be beneficial, but I'm going to talk about how I like to tab my parts apart uh, versus sawing them apart, and then kind of do a little overview of what, why you'd want to tab in the first place. So there's a couple of reasons why you'd probably want to tab apart. And the most common one that you see nowadays is on a five axis machine where they have this little dangly piece and then they tab the bottom and uh, they just break it off. Mainly it's for show on Instagram, just kidding. Basically what the whole concept is, is you don't want the big carrier on the bottom and you don't want to rough a bunch of stuff off in the second operation. Cause most of the time you're using extra stock to try and lift the part up out of the vise so you can get around it and hit all those types of features. So you have a huge piece of metal below holding onto it and you just need to get rid of that because sometimes the, the part is so frail on top. If you were to cut that big piece of stock off, you could bend it and you could, it just becomes problems. So it's really nice to be able to flip it around and then, um, you know, have only 30 thou to cut off, you know, on the second operation. So there's other reasons too to tab. And that is if you have flat plates or just weird um, surfacing and you have no way to hold down and pull it down. So what you do is you put tabs around the outside and then you bolt those down and you can cut this side. You can actually flip it, cut the other side. And maybe there's some features that you can jig on after that like bolt holes you can bolt through or little blocks you can clamp onto. And then you would profile all those tabs off. It's kind of the same realm of like window framing where you buy an extra piece of stock of material and then you would, you know, basically make the part in between and use the extra material stock as kind of a fixture, a throwaway fixture. And you would tab this part around with little tabs, cut the front side, cut the back side, and then just whittle it out. And at the end, you can snap it out. So yeah, the window framing is a pretty cool way to do things. I've done them on a, a three axis machine too, to where you have locators on the outside, like pins or something and bolt holes, and then you can just machine the inside and then you flip it and locate it again uh, on the same, same position. Uh, and then you can cut the other side and then you just tab it out and then just snap it out. And then maybe you can put it down and profile it or whatever for me. I'm never a one and done kind of guy. I don't like doing the one and done. I always make sure that I do a second operation because I, I don't ever want a file to touch my part. Now there are certain situations that I have, uh, you know, tabbed one and done, but it was already getting extra, you know, hand processing or it was going in the tumbler or it just wasn't, the customer didn't really care and they're just trying to get the price down. But for the majority of the parts that I do, I want it when I tab, I'm definitely gonna cut the, op two on a machine. One of the main reasons of people that do it on a three axis machine is they have very small parts. Let's say you have a strip of metal and you make a bunch of different little parts on there and you profile them out. So you have like five parts that are super flimsy, but you have this big stock on the bottom of it. Well, if you were to flip it around and maybe if you van saw those apart and flip it around and you tried to rough that sock off, you would probably just bend the part altogether and uh, just ruin it. So it's just way too much cutting pressure to ever cut that type of carrier off. So what you would do is take a slitting saw and you would slit you know, all the way down the bottom like a saw. And then you just have this little piece you can just break off. I mean, I've done plenty of pieces to where it is such a delicate piece that there's no way you're gonna rough that stock off. So you just wanna slit saw it. I mean, you can slit saw it as close as five thousandths if you want, and then just uh, flip it on the op two and then cut it. It's kind of like you know a lathe to where you part it off, you get a really sharp part off, you can undercut the, the, um, the chamfer and then meet in the middle and you have a little bit of a, a little bit of a sharp edge, but it's probably good enough to where it's not gonna matter. When you're figuring out the thickness of the tab, you kind of have to go by the weight of the part and just how big it is. Like I've had parts that can handle a 10 thou tab that were pretty big, especially if they were curved, if it had a curved tab, because then you're like, it's not just one thin strip that's bending. When you curve it, then you have, three points of contact in a way, like the high spot and two edges. And so that way it's, you know, not able to break. Also too, if the trinian is straight up and you tab it, it's fine. But what if it was 90 degrees and you tab it and it kind of drops? Well, I've had 
you know, parts get flung off when the, the tilt comes up so fast that the part just shoots off because it was too, uh, too thin. So depending how fast your machine is, I know there's some fast machines in there that can whip those things out of there. Uh, that'd be pretty cool though if you could whip the part off and then it lands in a catcher mitt or something. <laughs> so now we come down to the concept of how I like to tab parts. And basically what I do is I cut the center out, and, which I see a lot of people do. But then I, I get really close to the jaw and then I make it to where I can just break it apart like so. And that basically was derived from me sawing parts when I was younger and having one well, scrapping parts because I smack it with the saw on accident but just having to take the, the parts on the cart, move them over to the saw bay, saw them out, get all the wax and all the, the nasty uh, chips all over it, and go back, clean my stuff off, especially with all the wax. And then it was just super messy. And I was like, man, this is like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Basically what I do is I mill out the center and then I spot face two little counter bores uh, right by the jaw. And that way it's flimsy enough to where I can just break it apart. The key to this is to have this stuff modeled in your software, because if you don't have a model and you don't have an accurate way to put it on your vices or you don't know where anything's at, you're going <laughs> to you're going to slam into your vice and cut into your vice. So what I'm doing here is that I am leaving about. Yeah, 30 thousandths of web next to the vice uh, serration, and I'm cutting it all the way down to the bottom deck, 15 thou above the bottom deck, and then I'm leaving another um 40 foul away when i punch through from the face of the the hard jaw now your material sizes are can be anywhere from a negative 15 foul off nominal anywhere to a positive of you know 35 40 if I've, I've seen so you want to make sure that you're leaving at least 30 thousandths off the wall of your your vice jaw before you punch through because if your parts are small on that floating jaw it could hit so if you look closely, my parts only have like an eighth inch carrier on them. And that's for one, to keep costs down on material. And for two, just extra roughing time on the backside. So if you have these thicker, there could be a possibility you won't be able to break them apart. You can go a little bit thicker, but you have to make sure that it's your carrier is thin enough to where these things will snap. I don't know where they're, <laughs> the threshold would be on that. I'm sure you could really snap them. Even a quarter inch, you could probably snap if you really get that counter bore next to the edge. But the thicker it is, the harder it's gonna to be to snap. So in this case, I have three of these bad boys right here and I just snap them apart like so. So that way I can put them in my vise. So some of you may be questioning like, why don't I put all three of them in the vise just like they are and slip them in there and just clamp them. Part of the problem with that is you're, you're probably gonna get one that's gonna be thinner than the other and then one's gonna rip out. I don't know, there's been times where I've done like five, in, five parts in a vise, just depending on what it is, but you're always gonna have one at some point rip out and so for basically just making sure everything's perfect all the time and you don't ruin your jaws because you have one rip out and the cutter hits it and it rips your jaw and it ruins your jaw i just make sure i have two parts on either side as far apart as possible uh in my vice and that's kind of the point like if i had a part that was snapped like this it was this wide i wouldn't want to put it in the vice close together i'd want to snap them apart and then put them towards the edge because that's where you're, the farther you are on the edge, the better grip force you're gonna have. Also too, this is a big thing that I started doing is if you have a big piece of metal and it's pretty tall and you cut out your part in between, it's gonna bow on you. And it's like, it's gonna put a lot of stress in your part and it's gonna bow. And before I wasn't even cutting a centerpiece out and I would just put in the vise like so. And I was trying to hold it down. Well, the problem was, is the carrier was so thick, I couldn't snap it down. I had to like hit it, clamp, hit, clamp, hit, clamp, hit, clamp, because there's so much tension in that metal that I just couldn't get it to sit flat. So after I cut out the center and you know spot face it to where I'd snap it, I wouldn't even snap it. I would still just put it in there. But then when I tap it, there's no metal there to hold that tension in there. So then I can just lay down flat, distort, move in, out. Like it's just, you know, it was just a really good situation to where that you know tabbing routine worked to where i didn't even have to break them apart i could just you know put them in the vise and they sit good so that's another reason why i like to tab them uh if i run into that situation so basically when i'm cutting these things i'm ramping in the center and then i'm just plunging i have to use coolant otherwise it could gall up because i'm going pretty fast but let's say on a part like this i have two pieces where i ramp ramp in and plunge that's literally under four seconds to do that 
So it's like real fast and it's pretty much done. So I guess you can think about how long that would take you to solve those pieces and the risk and how nasty they are when you're done. And, you know, basically I do two of these at the same time. And in total, I think it was eight seconds, just over eight seconds to have those tabs. So yeah, it's kind of a no brainer for me. I will say though, I would really like to have a bandsaw in here because there's times where I just need a bandsaw parts apart. This isn't a do all for every part for sure. There's other parts that, you know, it's nice to cut things off, prototyping or whatever, but I did want to show you guys my method of tabbing and uh, that is how I do it. So if you guys are trying to reach that Sigma machinist phase, you got to make life easier on yourself and uh, find processes that can help you out. No cap. And if you have no idea what I just said, ask your kids. <laughs> All right, guys. See you on the next one. Later. <laughs> so stupid.